Can you share a few words in my, from my spirit and then we get out of here? If that's okay with you. Is that okay? Psalm 71 verse 20. If you're there, if, if say amen. Psalm 71 verse 20. I want to read something there that is very important. I don't intend to open many scriptures today. For the obvious reason, there is a point I want to seek. 21. Uh-uh. Okay, you can begin from 20. The Bible says, Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again, and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again, and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. That's the experience of salvation. Praise the Lord. The death and resurrection, the quickening up from the depths of the earth. Depths of the earth is dead. Praise the Lord Jesus. I don't know that you understand up to that level. Next verse, 21. He says, Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Somebody say, one, two, three, go. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Read it one more. every side. Let me first help you understand this. Has anybody here ever come in contact with a, with a nation called the Philippines or Filipino people? Put up your hands if you've ever come next to them. If you have ever interacted with Filipinos. Praise the Lord. Philippines is a poor country. Hmm? But in my life, I have never seen a nation with a stronghold of servanthood like the Philippines. Praise the Lord. They have a stronghold of servanthood. And because they have a stronghold of past servanthood, their attitude is poor. Their prayers are poor. Their fasting is as poor. Their submissions are poor. Their yieldings are poor. Their visions are poor. Their dreams are poor. Their ministries are poor. Their interpretations are poor. Their seekings are poor. Their sub everything, their subjects are poor. Their understanding is poor. Everything about them is poor. That's why if you've lived around a group of Filipinos, you realize they have their mentality is to serve men. They are poor in their spirit. Their prayer requests are they are poor. They are very poor. You see, when you're talking of that kind of stronghold, you understand why certain things happen the way they are. They are poor. They are very poor. They don't have greatness in their souls. They can speak great things, but they don't have greatness in their souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a secret about the things of the Spirit. If, let me tell you. Every rank in the Spirit by which you are known by men. Remember the Bible says you are in a piece of known and read by all men. Huh? has its provision. Praise the Lord. And because it has its own provision, if you have not provided for certain things in the life of the Spirit, they will never come to you. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a dispensed minister of the grace, so I'm not trying to allude to things that you have to do as of what God will call the wax. You understand? To validate you to grow in God. No, 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 no. I'm entirely speaking of faith and what you provide because you believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it wrong for us to give in church? It's not wrong. But it was wrong for Simon the sorcerer to see an anointing and say, 
I want to keep money. You get it? Why? Because the scriptures say, buy truth, but sell it not. Now, to the mature spirit, I mean to say, I can buy truth, but I cannot sell it. Meaning there is a price to a truth that I need, but there should not be a price to the one who giveth the truth. Did you get what I'm trying to tell you? Why? Because the distribution of this faith is freely given. Freely do we also what? Give. But remember when he's speaking about the place of prophecy, for example, he says if a man should prophesy, let him prophesy to the level of faith. If they are teaching to teaching, it's exhortation to exhortation. But when he gets to ministry, he says, and to ministry, let every man wait on his ministry. We don't minister according to the level of our ability to minister. We minister according to the level of our waiting. I don't know whether you understand what I mean here. Hallelujah. According to the proportion of faith. He says, having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, where the prophecy led us, prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. But when he gets to the teaching, he says, oh, he that teaches by teaching, or he that exalts by exaltation. But when he gets to ministry, we wait upon our ministry. We wait upon the ministry. When you speak the word of waiting upon, many people think patiently waiting for the Spirit of God to prompt you to scream or to preach or to prophesy. If he hasn't pushed me, I will not do. You know, I'm not talking about that kind of false humility. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why the scriptures say that we which have labored have entered into the rest. They are labors that precede every rest. We which have believed have entered into the rest. Labor to enter. <laughs> so the true labors are actually of faith. Did you get where I'm coming from? The true labors are actually of faith. Because he says, we which have believed have what? Have entered into the rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So we're not talking about works here. We're talking of another level of labor. And we're talking of the labors of faith. The things that we do because we believe. Praise the Lord. They are not the things that we do to receive. No. They are things that we do because we believe we have. I don't know if I understand what I'm trying to tell you. When a man parks his car outside, he goes out very sure he's going to find his car and drive away. It's also, it looks like a place of work for him to believe that his car is there. But the actual sense is, he doesn't need any, any consequence of force to believe that he's going to enter a car that he already has, as opposed to a man who doesn't have the car. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to tell you. So I'm not talking of the works of the law, the things that you must do for you to be in this. No, I'm talking of the works of faith. The things that you do because you believe. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? And one of the cardinal principles that I've seen with many, many, they don't wait in their ministry. They just do their ministry. They don't wait in their ministry. They don't wait in their ministry. That is why again I say, Everything you'll attract in the spirit realm will come with the provision you've given it. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Things just don't happen. Don't be deceived. Some of us are just not too humble to ask that things just don't happen. Things just don't happen. We're just not too humble to what? To ask and say, how? But things just don't happen in men's lives. If you read anywhere in church history, any, that's why when I find a man who has done something bigger, it doesn't matter. There are issues. I will honor them. Why? There is something they know. There's just something they know. There's just something they know. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why I'm passionate for the works not to mock on us. I'm always passionate about that. 
We must learn to count the cost of the ministry. He says, yeast the wax mock on us. I'm always talking about this because I know what it means to be mocked by the thing you, that ought to obey you. You get what I'm trying to tell you? I know what it means to be mocked by the thing that you ought, that ought to obey you. Hallelujah. And I know how it feels like when you try to be something and you fail to be, yet the scriptures say you are. That thing. It is very painful. It is disturbing to any normal soul. You get what I'm trying to tell you? That is why I want to share a certain direction today in these few minutes that we have. I want to open your eyes to something very serious in the body of Christ. The reason that's why you see men fighting each other, contending, jealous over other people's ministry, doing this and completing that and disqualifying men in the gospel, very simple. They did not provide for what certain men provided for. Period. Period. You understand where I'm coming from? A man will wake up one day and just do one thing <laughs> and go out. And I don't say, I don't believe that. Uh, there should be something. Uh, that's okay. Let me tell you. Huh? That's why certain people don't understand me very well. But sometimes I want to think the way God would think. You get it? Because I told people one time, I gave them an example. I told them, if, if a man can get to a point where he wants prophecy, and he has a sorcerer that can bring up something called the spirit of Samuel. You get it? That means that that man has advanced enough in the spirit realm to provide enough testimony for a man who is not born again that he can do it. Some of us say, we don't believe in seances. How many of you know what seances are? Eh? Those things where people go to graves and then they call the voices of the dead and then the dead start to speak. We don't believe in them. It's true we all don't believe them. But the Christians don't go in to ask themselves, how do these guys do it? How can a man in the world provide for himself enough to produce a spirit of a dead man? And a man in the spirit is just producing excuses. And, and funny things explaining their limitations. How? How do we weigh these two things? And then people say, oh, our ministry is we're trying everything, we're trying, but the ministry is not growing. We're doing everything. Let me tell you, ministries don't just grow. That's what I was trying to tell people. Ministries don't just grow. But there are certain things we won't speak now. Eh? We are going to wait until, for two, just give me, just give us about, by next year, October. Some people will listen. Do you know Panero grew from zero? To 2,066 people in three months. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? <laughs> Another three months, if all factors were to remain constant, which is not so, eh? it means that the next three months would be 4,000 what? Then the other three months would be how many? Then the other three months would be how many? That is if we are to be too slow. <laughs> do you realize we are going to make men listen do you know we are going to make men listen let me tell you I've looked at some of our generals today and I look at their services and I'm thinking there's something wrong so one time I went to God and I said what did they learn because if we don't learn these things we'll also have the same with so repercussions are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I just realized there's one thing. That's why me and Mama Lois yesterday were not sharing on radio. I told them, when the Bible speaks of the setting in order, that's just one side, the things which are wanted, there are certain things that must take precedence in the life of a Christian. Many, when they read Exodus 44, 30, they think, oh, the first fruit of all oblations and of all things. But many don't realize that he says of the first fruit of all things, not just money, all things. 
I'm talking of the first things, the first principles of the oracle. One time Pastor Isaiah made a statement. He said, if you go up and skip certain stages in the spirit, it doesn't matter how long, you'll still come back from scratch. And again, you see, once you miss a stage in the spirit, you will come back. And that's true. You will come back, and that's true. So it's important for a Christian to first hold on to what you have, and then you go back and say, okay, now, have I really swept as I ought to? Because if you don't, it doesn't matter how much you sweep, you still come back. And that's the truth. Some men at old age are coming back. They've finished everything. They're coming to the end of their life, and they're coming back. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. At the point when the Son of God says to hold on to that which they have, they cease. You get it? To labor, to keep that which we have bestowed on men. But we don't run in vain. They are not laboring to keep. They're coming back to get right. You get what I'm trying to tell you? That's why I tell people that our generation is at most stake of judgment. Why? Because we know too much. We know too much. To whom much is given, much is required. And consequently, to whom much is given, much is judged. That's why he says, you teachers, take heed. For you shall receive a weightier judgment. Why? Your weightier judgment is because you know more than certain people knew. See, these men who have troubles will tell you, you go to a nation and men don't even know a quarter of what an average Ugandan knows. But they are pastoring churches. You can go through Hong Kong and look for a 500-seater and fail to get it. 500-seater and fail to get it. And fail to get it. And fail to get it anywhere. A nation. A whole nation. You can't find a certain ministry. That means that with all the brains they are combined, there are certain things they still can't get a hold of. They are strongholds. They must be broken. And that is why we teach these things. I'll tell you why. Certain things are about to change eh? in a few years from now. We have been available, but we might not be available like you think or like you might want us to be available. We will be still accessible, but we will not be available. You get the difference? You can be accessible, but not be available. And I look around and I realize many of you are going to become ministers. You're not just going to be normal guys seated in churches. No, you're going to become ministers. I'm not prophesying. No, I'm speaking in knowledge. There's a difference. You know, the meditations of the apostolic, because they have an architectural line, eh? We know what to build when we, when we are building it. And we know what to leave when we have to leave it. Pastors don't. You get it? That's why sometimes I can tell Pastor Isaiah, see that person is here? Not now. Then Pastor Isaiah says, no, no, he's in the Musumba. Then he goes, then he tries to do the things. Then after he comes and tells me, hey, to make it work, you're better to from one or you're many. Then I laugh. You get it? But the pastor's heart can't change. He loves that way. Even me, I love differently, but I also love. <laughs> but don't want me to love like he loves. No. Every man has been given differently. Don't think for you to be an evangelist. It's too also another for you to be too much an evangelist. That after getting them saved, you want to stay with them forever. You have a problem. Let Pastor Isaiah love on that stage. Move on and get another one. That's the only way you can love the right way. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're seeking for a pastor's love, huh? You get what I'm trying to tell you? But every gen does what? Supplies. That there might be no what? Children. So there may be no, no division. That's why we can manage to minister together. Because he knows his part. I know mine. Entirely. I know mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
But as you start to grow in the gospel, you realize why Jesus has 12 guys. The others are also disciples, by the way. But there's a 12 inner circle. Sometimes you don't need to give time to all the 5,000. Sometimes you just need to get a 12 and trust them. Because the gospel will live longer than you. Whether you want it or not. This gospel will live longer than us. It will outlive us. Hallelujah. But let our path be clear. Because the gospel is a path. That's what the Bible says in Revelation. That he that addeth or subtracts of his book, his path shall be rubbed out. Each one of us has a path in the gospel. What you call a sermon is a path in the gospel. What you call a prophecy is a path in the gospel. That's why there is a judgment of the corners of men who have ministered, not in the path. It's called idle words. You get it? And the Bible says, and you shall be judged for every idle word that you what? You speak. But back to the point I was trying to tell you. Always ask yourself, have I provided for the glory and greatness I seek? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do you get where I'm coming from? I'll give you an example. I can wake up tomorrow and say, um, that's the Sam preach when he preaches one Sunday. Another Sunday, that's the Sam preach when he preaches another Sunday. Even another Sunday, that's the Sam preach when he preaches another Sunday. Now, Pastor Zach might say, why is Pastor Sam preaching every Sunday? I'll give you an example. Why is Pastor Sam doing what? Preaching every Sunday. Maybe he knows better than Pastor Sam. Maybe he has been in the ministry longer than Pastor Sam. Maybe he seems to know me more than Pastor Sam. And now that's the delusion of association. They thought that because the man has been so close to you, therefore they know you. You get it? And that's the problem with when a man... Because I used to tell people, when the Bible speaks of tail-bearing, many people know only one-dimensional tail-bearing. One-dimensional tail-bearing. Can you believe I saw so-and-so doing this? Or in all Uganda. But there are men who are spiritual and are tail-bearers. Hallelujah. I'll give you an example. If Pastor Isaiah comes and tells me, I want to tell you a secret. I'm going to change the shape of this church. He has said the secret. It means I shouldn't know it. No, my wife shouldn't know it. My children shouldn't know it. The next person should not know it. Then the devil tempts me to a place of weighing me and the relationship I carry with Pastor Isaiah with another person in the ministry whose ministry also and place is advancing in the same time enough for us to weigh each other pertaining how much favor we have with Pastor Isaiah. And while we are speaking these things, I let the man know, by the way, did he tell you he's changing the church shape? Then this guy says, no. So how can you say you know him? Uh -uh. You tell me, how can you say you know him? That's the word, tell bearer. Because you have spoken a secret of the spirit and divine purpose. You understand? Some misapprehensions and errors that are made by Christians in this faith is the speaking of the divine things early. Very simple. The speaking of the divine things early. Maybe, just maybe, Joseph could have been what he wanted to be without necessarily going through the pit. You can celebrate it. But maybe, just maybe, if Joseph had been raised in a certain place and understanding, he would not have told the dream at that time. Because whether he spoke it or he didn't, it didn't need to be spoken for it to come to pass. The Lord had opened the little boy's ears and sealed their instruction to rob him of purpose and pride. Whether he spoke the dream or he did not speak the dream, it had to happen. Why? Because the vision had to come to pass. God had anointed Joseph for something. You get it? But the speech that comes out of his words, even though it seemed like it was testimony, it's what sets him against and changes the whole course of his life. And many people think that necessarily Joseph had to go through Potiphar's house and the prison. Not necessarily so. 
not necessarily so. You don't need to go through prison for you to be a success. No. You don't need to be, you know, forgotten in prison for you to interpret. There should still have been another way for him to be a success. Moses didn't first drown in water. No. To get to the king's palace, it was simple. They just put a, something for him, blah, 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 and that's it. Hallelujah. She calls him Moses, for he was drawn out of water. But the usual lines of the root of Revelation, when you actually study the real name Moses and incline it more to the Hebrew, you're surprised. It's more of he that draweth out of the water. So, what to them is a helping ministry to him? To the mind of the spirit is the boy's ministry to Israel. Later. I don't know whether you understand that. So when he passed the waters, boy, it was seen one day by a Hebrew mind and a Hebrew God that he would do it. Like Talisa Kumai will be little girl wrapped up, little girl come out in one language, in another the Talisa is different. There are two languages, but they, differ, they are different in distinction depending on the mind of the Spirit and the portion of revelation that the Lord wants to attach to it. Are we together? Are we together? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. But maybe, just maybe, Joseph spoke early. He spoke early. On the other contrast, look at David. You realize that the first time David speaks of killing lions and bears was before Saul. That means David could kill a bear and open its, I mean, a lion and open its mouth and go back home and eat dinner like nothing happened. Like nothing happened. Now that's a stable spirit. Because ours don't know the difference between tell bearing and testimony. That's why you realize that the true place of testimony has a witness of a finished work, if accorded to purpose. But if it's related to purpose and realize that there is still a more demanding of time for God to bring out a weightier line of glory, certain things are wisely concealed. As I told people, when I yet come to speak our experiences, with Jesus Christ, many men will be surprised how much we experienced him. As you may say, oh, I saw Jesus on a tree. Oh, from that day, my life changed, and it's wonderful. But at the end of the day, the test they live in the spirit of a man is not after the person of Christ, but it is after the exaltation of their person that you'll know that that man saw Jesus. So that when he's walking, you say, my God, this guy saw Jesus. Stay away from him, he saw Jesus. You get it? As I told people that one day when we narrate how much we saw Christ, the things he spoke to us in the secret chambers, the experiences we had with him in the rooms, the things we had with him everywhere, many men would be like, oh oh. Oh oh. Oh oh. It's not as obvious as they thought. So certain things are best kept now and let them be validated by the Spirit. If indeed you know Christ or unknown of him. That's what the Bible says. If indeed you have known Christ, or unknown of him, or unknown of him, does that mean he doesn't know everyone? He knows everyone, but there's a special knowing that he must have for you as a child of God. So I'll give you an example. Pastor Zach will ask me, why are you giving him the? Every time. Me, I am in your best. I'm close to you. We travel together most in the car. I have been with you this long. And you see, the gospel is not sentiment. It's not emotionalism. But because you're my body, therefore we have to be closer. Let me tell you, true men of God are not known by anyone. You notice, men, who are, men of God, they are, they are hard to interpret. They can smile today and then tomorrow be annoyed. And you see, but this guy, what's that? No, no, no. Why? Because the experience is spiritual. Might not always be translated physical. You get it? You're excited. You got a new bike. You're coming to testify of how much you got a new bike. The Lord is bending me for Asia during that same time. And you want me to share in your joy of the bike. You understand? But to that level, those are vanities. And I don't smile and you say I'm indifferent. I'm not indifferent. I'm just a man of God. 
That's why when you guys say, well, me, I want to marry a man of God, know what you want to marry. No. Because men of God are crazy. A guy will just wake up in the morning and say, I don't want food. Not because he doesn't want to eat your food. No. The Lord has told him, don't eat. He refuses my food. <laughs> he refuses my food. <laughs> he refuses my food. Then we start to debate. No, he's not refusing. No, superstar wants to pray. Superstar wants to pray. That's why if it's marriage, it must be purpose. If, if it's just mubute, you don't know, but it must be purpose. Forget that. First of all, you guys say, I don't want to eat, even you say, even me, I'm not eating. <laughs> then I had a woman, a voice pastor's wife coming, he doesn't give me time, he's always in ministry. I asked her, what did you marry? You married a cameraman, like, it's like this guy. <laughs> For him, after camera, he doesn't have duties. After his project, he will just marry these three kids. He goes home. Marry Vumbo. So, what am I saying here? That every level, because you see, when a man says, why hasn't he invited me? He has invited Pastor Sam. I thought he was going to ask him. In fact, the question should not be, why has he invited Pastor Sam and not me? No. The question should be, why has he invited Pastor Sam? What does he see that I don't see in Pastor Sam? You, you get where I'm coming from? There are dads in Chambuga and they are saying, God, I need to send a man of God to preach in Chambuga. God told me, Peter. Now, Peter has just been here seven months. Little boy, 22. I sent Peter. Some people say, let me send my movie. How can you send a young boy like that to handle such a tenacity of ministry? After service, all of them were saying, my God, the guy blessed us. You understand? The guy said, shut up. You know why? Because why couldn't you trust that I knew it? Why couldn't you trust that I knew it? Now, I've been with you for two years and I've never trusted you. You should ask yourself, why this guy for seven months only could win my heart and I've been with you for years and I don't trust you? You know why ministers grow quicker? Hmm? They have learned to provide whatever they grow into. Because honor comes from God. Whether you want it or not. The Bible says he raises up one and puts down another. That's his hand. You get it? And when a man learns to provide for his ministry, I don't care whether there are 10,000 people against you, you'll fly somehow. Somehow you'll fly. If they close doors, God will create a window for you. If they close windows, he will remove a whole roof if you must preach. Because that's what the anointing does. But it's also another, when a man is on a pulpit and the windows and doors are open and they're saying it wasn't open to him. It wasn't open to him. And the delusion that he thinks or she may think that she deserves it because she's on the pulpit. Yet the spirit world speaks different. Have you ever been in a meeting? And had a man of God and asked yourself, what is he doing on the pulpit? Have you ever been there? You hear a man of God and say, what is he doing on this pulpit? You get it? Simple. The spirit world does not accept you. It doesn't. And I'm not talking of your indifference. There's also those indifferent prophets. You say, ah, me, the Lord tells me he's not supposed to preach. Those ones are different. I'm not talking of that one. That one also has their own class. <laughs> you get what I'm trying to tell you. And many of those ones, they realize when they are 40 or 50. They never usually realize now. They realize they were wrong when they are 60 there or 70 or when they're about to die. Usually the Lord keeps them long. You get it? That's different. But I'm, I'm talking of <laughs> Listen to me. I'm talking of a place where 
even the pulpit refuses you. It doesn't receive you. One time I was somewhere in a church and I got to a place of worship. I was going to preach. And while I was going to worship, the Spirit of the Lord told me there's a girl behind here holding a mic she was not supposed to be holding. I was in a certain meeting. Somewhere in a church in Kawimbe. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, watch. I stood on the pulpit to watch. So there is a redeemer. The anointing of the Holy Spirit hit her back, rolled her off the pulpit and threw her there. Eh? Eh? No, this wasn't a girl yielding to the Holy Spirit. No, this was someone refused by the Holy Spirit to minister. And she stayed like that until the end of service. Do you understand how serious this is? Do you understand how serious this is? When your occasion comes, and many people misunderstand this thing called season. Some people say, it's my season. Oh, it's your season. It's their season. Seasons are places where men have fully provided for what comes their way. That's what they call season. Fully provided that nothing can refuse you. Nothing. Nothing can refuse you. Nothing. But remember, for every season, the Bible says there is a timing. Meaning that the most important provision there is your time. How you arrest your time in the spirit and then put it in the earthly timing. Because that is your moment in the spirit. There, the Spirit of God will do and provide for everything because it's your opportunity. But the heart of the Spirit, the mind of God, must be in that. Must be in that. I've seen pastors. Have you, have you been around pastors who know too much to have a certain congregation? You realize the guy knows too much to have 20, 12 members, 5. I had this thing many years ago, and I got the answer. I got the answer. They don't know how to provide for the numbers the anointing on their life should minister to. And some spend 40 years in ministry, and they only produce what you do in a month or two months. And some are satisfied with that, and they are called great men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you one secret before I finish. Reason why I read for you Psalm 71, 20, and 21. I always tell Christians that the beginning place of our yielding should be the expectance of greatness in our souls. It's what puts us to a certain place in God. It can be abused and misunderstood. That's why you find a man even with 20 members, 30, 100 members. He has bodyguards. So then guys here are seven people. Then he's walking. And then guys are... And man, that spirit can be deceptive. Because the man can even change walk. You get it? Many people say, walk like Denzel Washington. <laughs> you get it? Why? Why? He opened the ear. He opened the car. The car, yeah. You get what I'm trying to tell you? Hallelujah. 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 That man is trying to make a carnal approach to what should be a spiritual approach. I don't know that you understand what I mean. He's trying to do a carnal approach. Be big in the spirit, don't be big physical. Don't be big outside. Be big in the spirit. There's no way any man in this world can increase their weight. It's very easy to increase your weight. Just read the word and know how you increase the weight. But many men, many of our Christians in the faith have been weighed and they are found wanting. They are lighter than the first Adam. I'm telling you, they are lighter than the first Adam. 
if you calculate the place, the, the size of Eden and the size of their plot. Okay, let me not even go there. Do you realize that when he's talking to these animals, he's actually ministering to them? You get what I'm trying to tell you? Yes, you can say, oh, Abraham was, Adam was deceived. He was deceived, and that's true. But look on the glory. Look at the glory on Adam, the first Adam. First, understand the glory of the first Adam. Many people live in this life and die without having experienced even a quarter of the presence Adam felt and experienced in God. Because if we get to a point and the language of the Spirit by Moses says, and the voice of the Lord came walking in the garden. The voice was walking. Adam understood a certain language by which a voice would walk, and he knew this is God. The, the voice walking. And he has to hide because he knows this guy is somewhere. He knows. Ours are raising hands and he's passing them every time. You ask them, have you ever heard God speak? And honestly, honestly, the farthest they could go is a familiar spirit. But they don't even know the difference anymore. Anymore. I told people, God cannot speak to a man and that man does not increase in anointing. It's impossible. God can't speak to a man and that man's life remains no more. That's how I know that many people have not had God. No man. Read the Bible. No man had God. No man really had God. And he was the same. That's how expensive the voice of the Spirit is. How can a man living a certain life say, oh, the other day I met a Christian who said, all of my life I've lived my life on instruction. That's how I've gotten to where I was. The Spirit of God told me, no. I asked him how. He told me, look at the man who says he has lived all his life instructed. It's impossible. It's impossible. Concerning his kingdom and government, there is increase. Don't be deceived. There is increase. If the forces won't come by the influence you have directly, it will still exist somewhere. Look at the anointing on a man who goes in the wilderness to eat locusts and honey. And the vice versa says, and a voice came out of the wilderness. You don't understand. He would shout in the wilderness and his voice comes in a certain form eh, and finds men in plain lands eh, and ministers to them. That's what they call a man who has had God. How can a man hear God and he stays the same? It cannot happen. Many people have not had God. You'll prove this many years to come. They have had familiar spirits. Their thoughts have been called God. They have idols in their head. They call God told me. And then the Lord told me, let me tell you, God validates every man who hears him. Don't get it wrong here. The seal of the Lord is on those who know him. It's very clear. So they that know their God shall do mighty exploits. Do you realize that the word greatness, the Hebrew word God greatness there in 72, 71, 21, Gedula, is translated as mighty acts. You shall increase my mighty acts. Meaning there is no way man can hear God and not do mighty things. It can't be. Because he's a mighty God. The nature and form of his words coming in your spirit creates something in your soul. They must create something in your soul. That's why I tell people, the question is not how many things you've had from God. The question is, have you really had God? He talked to me in 2008. He told me, I am sending you to university. Six words. And that was it. No university can fail me. He spoke. He spoke. I am sending you to the city. Period. Three words. Me. Me, I don't even need an explanation. How? How will we buy? Mm -mm 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 -mm. One time a man, great man of God, me and him know. He says, he was seeking God. He knows. Huh? A great man of God. He says, he was seeking God. And while he was in a corner, about a certain nation, while he was in a corner, the breath of the wings of the spirit blew him. And he says, that's it. He's holding three million people in a nation, service. Just winds blowing. <laughs> he didn't even hear God speak. He just had winds blowing on himself. 
And that was enough to hold a meeting of 3 million people in the nation. Now look at the people who say they've had God. Look at our Christians who say they've had God. Let me tell you, when you learn how God speaks, you'll be surprised how many men talk. And then they make him speak. You'll be so surprised. You'll be so surprised. And then the Lord told me. And then the Lord told me, really? Really? He told you. You're sure he told you. You're really sure he told you. I'm not doubting what's in you. I'm only saying God ain't stupid. If he speaks, he fulfills. You get what I'm going to tell you? If a man can just get a wind blowing on him and he can do three million people in the nation, he didn't hear a voice, Pastor Zach. A wind just blew on him. He just knew that this is the wind of the Spirit. And that was enough to tell him, I vindicated your ministry. Period. If the least among them shall raise a thousand, and the small one among them a nation, what about the greatest among them? Continent. That's why you hear great awakenings, men reviving continents. You get it? But if a man of God can't raise a thousand members, <laughs> no comment. You'll understand one day. If a preacher can't raise a thousand members, where is the place of least? I know why you won't say amen. Why does a man get a bar and sit thousands of people in a bar in one night? And he has everything to provide for that bar. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Then me and Emma know people. We used to minister with men who looked like they loved the ministry more than Jesus did. Musumba they sell everything of theirs for Christ. You understand? They borrow for Jesus' ministry. They, they, they lie to pay for Jesus' ministry. Everything around them is as though Jesus is not interested. They are more interested to help him because he's desperate and can't help himself. He said, on this rock shall I build my, I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Trust me. It's one thing when it's built of God. It's another when you build it. It's another when you build it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So when the man says, you shall increase my might here, Pro- start to provide your spirit for greatness. Start to, you must be great. You must be great. Don't dream about small stuff. People who have small stuff are there. That's a stronghold. Don't dream of small ministry. Don't dream of small business. Don't dream of little worship. That is why you don't even change songs. You're singing the same songs every day. Because you don't dream of greater. Nothing. You can't even think and say, oh, this is a new song. Can we practice it? Some of you, you don't even have that mind. Why? Because your, 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 your mind is small. You don't provide for big things. You're going to be a choir in two years and you've never written songs that can be sung here. Or some of you just write individual. You can't dream and say, Pastor, we want to have the greatest worship night in Mokono. It's not coming from them. No, they don't dream big. They just want to put on the same colors on Sunday, every Sunday. Yeah. And then after putting on those same colors, you sit there. And then you shout. Why don't you dream big? Why don't you really dream big? I've had more talent in this church than many ministers out there. You know, I was, I was meditating on the scripture of, of the message that says that the Old Testament, the, the, the glory of the New Covenant, eh? and the glory of the Old Testament, it says that the other glory, the law, looks right upwardly dull compared to the new glory. When I hear some rappers in our nation, they are dull when I compare them to New Testament. They are dull. I'm not abusing. That's the truth. Even them, they know. There is talent here. But it's just growing older. Why? Because there is a square member now who still believes God for 5,000 shillings to get to Mukono. Now, how can we get that mind on the world stage? How? How? 
New Testament has been seen in his mercy. The Lord just spoke to me the other day. We are going to sponsor his concert as Fanero. Those of you who want to also join, you join. If you don't, he's provided for it in his spirit. He's singing the things that he is. And they're earning him. Then you say, oh, why is he providing for New Testament? Me, I have a lot of songs in your cities. I don't even know how many you have. Ask him how he did it. But there ought to be greatness in your soul. There ought to be greatness in your spirit. You can't sit there and think that you're going to earn on that little job they give you. Two million, four, five million. No, you're bigger than two million. Listen, he said you lend to nations. Do you know what that means? It means that you're past living on your salary. Forget your salary. Forget what a man can pay you. When the blessing of God can pay you more. That's why Ugandans are poor. Because we're always looking for aid, extra help. We love the predominant line of I'm poor. You'll see how many people come for prayer. Pastor Nixon, sometimes I want to weep when someone comes and tells me, Apostle, pray for me, I don't have a job. I, I want to tell this poor thing. Who killed your soul to think that because you don't have a job, therefore you can't be a success? Who taught you that way? No, the Bible says whoever doesn't work shall not eat. Which work? You think office only? No, even the gospel is work. I don't expect anybody who doesn't have a job not to be preaching. You're, I don't understand you. Can you preach? Yes. Do you have a job? No. And you come for a job when there is a job to preach the gospel. Mark around the way. After graduation, I put on my shoes and started door to door. I used to go preaching everywhere. After graduation, I, I was gotten off the street. And I'm like, hey, you graduated. Come and we we'll give you a job. Yeah, I never looked for jobs. I never looked for jobs in my life. Uh-uh. Get to a point where the devil will want to get you off the street. I say, no, no. Let me get him a multi-million dollar deal. No. This guy's preaching too much. But the, the little guy, she doesn't have anything. She's free. She's single. She has nothing on her. And she's asking for a job. Preach! Preach! That's why many of them these days, when they come, I need a job. I say, God, lay on them the true burden. The true one. This is false. The true one. Let them preach the gospel. It's a work. The worker is worthy of his meat. You can't preach Sakaranda Labarande and you sleep hungry. It's impossible. But you look at their life. Apostle, pray for me. I need a job. Apostle, pray for me. The Bible. Apostle, my boss. Apostle, Apostle, pray for me. This is happening. Apostle. And then you hear and you, they sound like Filipinos. How many Filipinos have you had telling you, I want to revive Philippines? Pastor, they don't make those prayers. They've been blinded from the true blessing and greatness. They always ask for small things. My husband, I need to go to America. You find them in Malaysia. They're saying, I want to go to America. Pastor, pray for me. I want to go to America. I want to get married. Pastor, how old are you? I'm 30. How, which, 30. He asked them, who do you want to marry? Any man, 60, 70, I don't care. I want money. You get it? Born again. Born again. If a guy is 70, she doesn't care. She just wants what? Money. Pastor, pray for me. And then you say, oh God, this child of God, she's 30. She's going to marry 70 year old because she's poor. Translated. Our Ugandans also think that way. People think if a certain guy doesn't come in her life, she'll never be. Wabula. You plead with a sister, that guy, receivity, he's not born again. No, me, I want him. No, the truth is not you don't want him. No, the truth is you're broke. <laughs> and you don't know another way to sleep in a nice house without having that guy. You're poor. Do you know how many girls have refused houses, mega houses, for the sake of this gospel? <laughs> then you also waste my time and call me. Pray for me, Apostle. The man has changed. I switch off. 
Don't waste my time. There's one who is hungering for the presence. This one is telling me, she's in her yard there marrying an unbeliever, and she's telling me the man has changed. When I switch up, I say, God, I pray. If I try to pray for them, I pray Mickey. You know what it means to be called pray Mickey? How many of you know what they call praying Mickey? Praying Mickey is when you pray a prayer and you know it's going to work. It's going to work the other way around, but you provide for them to lead you. They've stuck on you. Pray for me. I need a job. And then you pray. And then the Lord shows you they don't do principles. They don't tithe. They don't do nothing. They're not going to get a job. Then you say, okay, let's pray. Father, I pray you give them a job. Then after that, the Spirit tells you it's not going to happen. Hey, but anyway, so I left you. I pray Mickey. Some of them, even after hanging up, I say, God, I thank you that you're not going to give her a job. I thank you. And continue to make her a bit more broker than she was. So that she can get to a point where you're the only source. Maybe, just maybe, she'll be delivered. Because I don't understand how I can teach you tithe for four years and you still don't tithe. You're stupid. You're stupid. I'm sorry, I'm not abusing. It's the truth. It's the truth. Tithe. Ten. One to ten. 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 Do you understand? They've taught you all of these years and you can't know the simplest principle of success. You say, I'm struggling with fast food. You're struggling with fast food. You're struggling with fast food. You think we didn't struggle? You think we didn't struggle? That's the difference. You don't see greatness. You don't want to be great. You don't want it so bad. You don't want it so bad. You don't want it so bad. You're poor in your soul. You're poor in your soul. You think that by getting that tenth, listen, let me tell you, I'm not boasting. I don't give tenth anymore. I told God I'm past the level now. I must give more than a tenth. I've graduated past tenth. That's not even temptation to me anymore. I've realized tenth is small for a great minister. And the things I want, I'm providing for them. Tomorrow you're going to be see me with multi-millions on the account. You're going to open your mouth. He's dealing, he's robbing people. You speak your nonsense. Me, I'm giving. Speak your what? Your nonsense. Me, I'm giving. Me, I'm giving. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do you understand where I'm coming from? How can you not provide for what you believe you are? Unless you're not convinced that you are. But you're acting that you are. And on top of that, you're going to stand and preach that you are. No, your work will mock you. I promise, your work will mock you. It will prove and say, no, she is not. She's just claiming to be. Likewise, it is with the gospel. Not only money. Other things in the ministry. If you're serving, serve with duty and Monday. Because you know what you're believing God for. I've served for say that I come into 10 years. Now if I should come out and flourish, don't think you're also just going to wake up tomorrow and stand on the pulpit and all the lights will get on you. You're lying. You're lying. It's not just going to happen that way. Trust me. There are principles that are laid down whether you want it or not. You look at the people who came in this ministry and they got excited and went and started things without being willing. You watch what happened. You don't even need to cast them. The works already were cast. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Why? Because our generation is always too excited on everything that falls on their head. They think every open door is yours. Every open door you think is yours. But when you go back to the spirit of the man, you realize greatness is not in him. There are certain things he should provide for. I'll give you an example. If I ever die, when you've not had me, I'm above 30 million dollars, you know I failed. Eh? I'm just telling you. As a fact. When I saw this dream years ago, I stopped to give poor. I said to give big in my life. I don't give small. The beauty is I don't show when I give. 
Because I don't want the right hand to know. You know, some people who want to give. See, I was in a certain Baptist church years ago. Now, when a guy gets money, he comes with it like this. You get it? Even when the preacher preaches, do you know what he does? He comes like this. <laughs> As when I'm giving 20, hello, 20, hello. You see me? Yeah, that's me, baby, that's me. And he puts it in and walks away. <laughs> You've been around those people. Who? Eh, they want to give you when everyone is watching. If they give in the silence, they'll at least look for another testimony. <laughs> Why? Because when I looked at my ministry, I realized that no man in Uganda could individually fund it. I, I realized it many years ago. No man could individually, unless what you believe God for, a certain man can provide. That's okay. Pick your pieces and flowers. But when what you're believing God for, no man can do. That's why I tell people, unless God is your only source, but when God becomes your only source, and he's the one who said he will increase your greatness, in your voice, of all men you speak it. You're not wise. Do you understand? It's the same thing with the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why doesn't our generation have greatness in their soul? Why don't you believe God for big stuff? It's like you guys, mobilization, we're doing Simania Catch the Fire. Yeah, because you believe it's great, you're going to do big stuff. Because you believe it's great. You believe it's great. When I started radio, I'll give you an example. When I started radio, I go to a certain ministry, I send a check every month. You get it? Because I'm providing for my radio program. It's you understand what I'm trying to tell you? There are people who give, there are people who don't. Hmm, that's okay. But I'll never look for a man and say, why don't you give money for radio? Why don't you give money for Panera? I don't do that lawsuit. Because my business is with God. If a man fails to fund a radio program, I will get on my pocket and fund it. Because I'm blessed. But do you know how many pastors have stood in front of people quarreling? You, you don't support the radio. You don't support it. You don't support it. You are doing this thing. You don't support it. They don't need to support. You provide for your vision. Because you don't need the many to support. You just need one person, Jehovah God. One person. I don't know if anybody understands what I'm trying to say here. Amanda is my witness. The time she says, I would ask her, how far would they account? Oh, I'm sending this money on Tuesday. There's a partner bringing money on Tuesday. And I said, no, no, no. Take it now. And I give her my own. Not because we, the ministry of radio has failed to get money. No. When that one comes, she will put it there also. Do you understand? But I have gotten to a point where if it is of God, are you hearing me? I must provide for it. It's my primary responsibility. There are many people, it's like prayer. There are certain people who will not pray until you pray. You get it? Until you, you pray. There are certain people who have mastered the art of praying openly to convince that they pray internally. Like the person who can stand and say, Ooh, and you think because she sings here, she's a worshiper in spirit. You get it? But I always tell people, look at the end line, the fruits. Fruits don't lie. If you're prayerful, you will know. Something about you will show. God will respond to you in a certain way. And the Lord who sees you do in secret, shall reward you openly. But you know how many ministers are so interested to make an open show of what they are not internally. 
of what they are not internally. Now, I would rather perfect that which is in secret, that the open reward will make him ask. You get it? I've learned the art of doing in secret. I've just learned the art of doing in secret. There's always a reward. But there's some people whose reward ends there on the pulpit. There, the song after she finished the song, even the reward went with her in a chair. That's why you don't grow. That's why you don't grow, because the reward ended there. Hey, you know, when I was preaching today, I saw people were going to be saying, Amen, Pastor, preach it on. Anyone finished preaching? Two minutes or one. Never judge a man who has provided for his children. Provide for you. That's why the Bible says every man should attend to his work that he may celebrate and rejoice in his own work, not in the other man's work. There are certain places no man can go there for me. And I must go there on my own. We can share the glory of me going, but I had to go there. Nobody could take me there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Period. When we say November blessing, a man who believes greatness must see millions of people coming. They must see what's my part in this. We must do something great. I want to be a part of the men who have done it great. I believe in greatness. I promise you, God, I'm going to bring ten people. You work on it. The ten come. You say, praise God. Praise God. I love people who think like that. Praise God. Why? They are seeing their part in the vision greatness. They might not be on the pulpit, like the apostle said, but they can mobilize people to do greatness. They can sell the t-shirts in greatness. They can sell the cities in greatness. They can usher in greatness. They can do security in greatness. Because it's inside their soul. They want greatness. They believe for greatness. You get what I'm saying? But a man here is November blessing. You're a church member and you do nothing. Nothing. And then you ask the Christian, do you believe greatness? It's yours. Do you believe in greatness? Start to act great. Start to act great. Hallelujah. Some of you, you want to buy in small shops, little small offices, taking coffee behind computers and speaking a lot of English. Some of you just want to accept that life. Hallelujah. Can't you dream of owning it? Can't you dream of employing those people? Can't you dream of having a multi-million dollar project? Can't you dream of having the best ministry there is in the world? Can't you believe for greatness? Can't you provide for it now? While the opportunity is. Because the time will come where you won't have time to provide. It will just be harvest. Period. Harvest. But there are works I've seen men in the time when the harvest is near. And you realize they didn't provide for it. Sad. I looked at the Filipinos and I realized God. Even Ugandans, some of them are like that. They have poor spirit. They don't dream beyond the border. There's a person who comes from a family that did not earn a dime or nickel. The other day I found a child. The mother is poor. The father is poor. She came and told me, Apostle, I ate my food. I told her, you're stupid. You're so stupid. Your mother is poor. Your father is poor. You're the only source to prove greatness and you're eating seeds. I asked her, what has your father told you? He told me, I never come back to Heart of Christ. I told her, don't come back. Listen to your father. When you graduate, you'll come and pray. Because we preach for nothing. Do you know how many men of God who have not been educated are failing? You look at all these men of God who didn't go to school. It doesn't matter how deep they are. Something diverts them. I don't know what happened. Meaning education is key. We must read. We need you in the ministries. We need you in revenue authority. We need you in KCCA. 
but you don't have greatness. You're eating fish. You're eating fish. Now, the, the pastor can give you sugar over that, but me, I, I can't stand it. Okay, I'm sorry, Pastor Isaiah. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. When the Lord revealed to us the desperation of our nation, we started to read. We started to read. Go in my car, I have three books. Get in my room, in my living room, I have books. Get on my computer, I have books. Get there. I am reading like seven books. You think I want to read? I don't like reading. But I'm providing for something. There is something on, there is something on us as a nation. There is something. Listen, I told people, I always had a problem when men had to say that black men can't think like them. I always had a problem when men had to say that because we're black, there's certain places we can't go. Has in an airport and, uh, and we were late for a flight, both of us, and then a white man passed. And I went to pass through. They checked me, almost the plane leaving me, because they don't trust me. I said, God, when will they raise the child of Africa? They are African child. They deny our boys' visas. They don't think our boys are going to come back, even those ones who are going for genuine cause. But we don't deny them visas in our nation. Because our nation is too cheap to enter. Theirs is more expensive. But somebody has to start feeling that pressure. Amen. We're great. Yes. The Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. If the problem was that a black man can't read, I'm going to read. Yes. If the problem was that black men don't understand the scriptures, we're going to read the scriptures like crazy. Why? Because we realize that the first shall be the last. Prophecy is getting fulfilled before our very own eyes. It means that I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Because when time when, when the time for Africa comes, when the time for Africa comes, Grace Lubega must be somewhere up there. This is for my children and my children's children. And to be remembered somehow. So we preach every day and we bank every day. Some of us how do you do it? Even me, I don't know how. I just realized I must do it. Necessity is laid upon me. I want to see something great one day. The clerk wrote an article and he said, those black men know we are wiser. You get it? I'm not saying that all white men are like that. No. I'm not even racist. No. I'm only trying to help you understand that when will they ever stop to look at you like weak men? If their father's prayed, why are you too fighting? If their father's prayed, the George Washington, man, I read the man's mind. These guys knew God. That's why America has gone where it was. These men, their father saw God. If they saw God, we can also seek God too. We can also seek God too. If our children will abuse the freedom, that's their problem. But let us be on the line. We must pioneer something. Some of you are comfortable dying in a sad world. Some of you don't even know the difference. Because your mind's a sad world already. They are colonized. You get it? But when will the African child think I'm smart also? I can do all things by Christ who strengthens me. I'm more than a conqueror by Christ. I can do this. I can do this. I can also stand on the world stage and be the best preacher to read. I don't care how much English is needed. I will read it. I'll use my grammar. I'll go semantic. I'll do everything. If it means studying the whole dictionary the whole night, I'll study the whole dictionary. I must speak nice English. Why? Because I want greatness. This prayer, I will pray better than the best. Why? Because we want greatness. But some of you, you're settling for little. You pray like your first world. You fast like your first world. You don't even provide for the faith you have. You can say your first world by faith. Why don't you act it? I refuse to think like some of you. Somebody raise your voice and speak to Jesus. Speak to Jesus. Speak to Jesus. Speak in other tongues. I just give you five minutes only. Speak in other tongues.
I can do all things by Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he which is in me than the devil in the world. The first shall be the last. The last shall be the first. God is raising Africa. God is raising our continent. God is raising our nation. In the name of Jesus. God change someone's mindset. Change someone's understanding. Change someone's weakness. Panic is strength. Just take a minute. God, we believe for greatness in our nation. We believe for greatness in Africa. We believe that we're on top of greatness. We believe that we're the most influential preachers in the world. The most influential teachers in the world. The most influential worshippers in the world. The most influential instrumentalists in the world. The most influential prophets in the world. The most influential apostles in the world. The most influential engineers in the world. The most influential architects in the world. The most influential HR managers in the world. The most influential financial managers in the world. The most influential administrators in the world. We are the wise of the wisest. We are the cream of the la cream. We are the great of the greatest. We are the best of the best. We are head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We increase every day. We are great. 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 We do great things. We do mighty exploits. In the name of Jesus. That is why I address every poverty spirit, every stronghold in the mind, every colonized mindset, every deluded idea, every weak conscience. In the name of Jesus, I command it to bow to the name that is above every name, to the word which is of Christ, that you are blessed, you are a child of God, you are increasing, you are multiplying. He said, I shall increase your greatness and I shall give you comfort on every side, on every side, on every side, materially, marriage, ministry, blessing, work, everything, on every side, you shall be comfortable. I will cushion your side with greatness, great marriage, great business, great ministry, great salmon. Great insight, great prayer, great understanding, great knowledge in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on, clap for Jesus. Tell your neighbor I'm great. Tell somebody I'm great. Tell him I'm great. I am great. Tell somebody I'm great. In the name of Jesus.